Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Can you hear my voice? Huh? Yes, you yes. can okay. right. I think if everyone run, uh, insyaAllah we can start Okay, sure Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh, and a very good evening to all to our beloved today, but beloved to doctor for today, for tonight, Dr. Salehin, and uh, to all my friends. Okay, uh, before we start, let us uh, open this uh, discussion with recitation of Al Fatihah. Amin amin ya rabbal alamin. Okay, uh, insyaAllah tonight uh, we are going to explore a, a very very comprehensive discussion on the topic of uh, immunization. So next, uh, here is the here is the flow of uh, this presentation. Uh, consists of uh, the concept behind immunization and uh, continue with immunization program based on MOH schedule and uh, contraindication and side effect of vaccination and also additional vaccination uh, which are not present in MOH schedule uh, and a very interesting topic controversy regarding vaccination and uh, end up with a uh, discussion regarding uh, COVID-19 vaccine and so on. All right, first of all, uh, let me define first what does uh, immunization uh, means. Immunization simply means uh, a way to make us uh, immune to a disease, typically by taking a vaccine. Okay, we, uh, nowadays we keep talking and waiting for COVID-19 uh, vaccine, but uh, do we know how vaccine principally works? Vaccine uh, help to stimulate the body's own immune system to protect person against subsequent infection or disease by producing uh, T lymphocyte and also antibodies. However, uh, it typically takes a few weeks for the body to produce uh, the antibody after vaccination. So uh, the problem is, uh, for example, for example, we take vaccination, right? We take vaccination and then we accidentally got infection just before or maybe just after that vaccination. So it is possible to develop symptoms and probably got that disease. Why? Because the vaccine has not had enough time to provide uh, protection against that uh, disease. And a vaccine composed of uh, entire disease causing microorganism, either life or kill, or uh, maybe some of the components, some of its components or products. Vaccine acts as a prophylactic or and therapeutic vaccine in order to, to prevent the disease and treat the disease. Vaccine uh, is administered in liquid form, either by injection orally and also intranasally. Next, uh, here is the brief is a quick comparison between active immunization and uh, passive immunization. So for active immunization, as its name suggests, uh, active immunization means antibody is actively produced by the person's own immune system whenever uh, got direct contact with pathogen. But for passive immunization, antibody is uh, received passively by, uh, by another host. And uh, for active immunization, uh, it provides slow onset because our body uh, maybe take times to produce uh, our own antibody, but it developed long, very long lasting immunity. It, it totally different with passive immunization, which it provides the rapid onset, which give immediate immunity via, via preserve, preserve antibody, but it only, it only provide a short term immunity for this. And uh, active immunization 
uh, it is not applicable for immunodeficient individuals. Why? Because immunodeficient individuals, uh, it, they already have problem with their immune system to provide immunity as usual. So, uh, so it's no point to trigger their immune system to, to provide uh, protection against disease. And uh, it is uh, different with uh, passive immunization, whereby it is applicable for immunodeficient individuals. And under active immunization, they have uh, two basic or two major approaches, which are life attenuated and also inactivated or purified components. For life attenuated vaccine, uh, it derives from the living organism that have been weakened. Therefore, it reduces their ability to cause disease. So due to that weakened, weakened organism, it produces uh, what we call complex immune response that stimulate to that stimulate natural infection. So for inactivated one, it uh, different between it different with life attenuated vaccine because the in, inactivated one uh, it doesn't provide immunity as strong as life attenuated vaccine. So we may need uh, maybe series of doses of vaccine with uh, some booster shot in order to provide uh, what we call uh, ongoing immunity against that disease. For example, uh, polio, uh, IPV, IPV vaccine. And then um, uh, under passive immunization, it can it has uh, naturally acquired and also artificial acquired. For example, natural acquired is the the, the, the the nursing infant. The nursing infant got maternal antibody, which are IgG and IgA from the mother via breastfeeding. So that antibody provided by mother uh, will protect the infant from certain disease. And for artificial acquired. For example, uh, gamma globulin injection, antivenom that provide extremely fast uh, immunity compared to active immunization. And then next, uh, next is uh, some concept of uh, booster. Uh, okay, I get uh, some a def a definition from the National Cancer Institute. It said that a booster dose refers to vaccination that given after previous vaccination means vaccination vaccination and then followed by booster why because it helped to maintain or increase a protective uh, immune response so that the first question regarding the concept of immunization and booster next second one is um, is national immunization program next okay here is the uh, here, here is the national immunization program in uh, listed in MOH schedule. For uh, for example, BCG, Hep B, DTAP, IPV, HIB, measles, MMR, MMR, JE, and also HPV. Okay, uh, next we go one by one. Uh, briefly explain. For BCG, BCG stand for Bacillus calmeguerin. It contains a strain or type of microbacterium bovis that causes tuberculosis in cattle. Uh, it is administered uh, intradermally and it is under type of life alternative vaccine. So when we do we, when do we give uh, it to the child? We give uh, at birth, zero and three. We give at birth and then we repeat again at third month if no scar present. Next uh, vaccine is hepatitis B virus. Hep B virus uh, easily spread when the semen or blood or bodily fluid of the infected person enters body of someone who is not infected via sexual contact, sharing needle injection, and so on. How is it administered? The answer is it administered uh, intramuscularly with three doses, 0, 1, 6 at birth, uh, second dose at first month and third dose at sixth month. And next vaccine is DTAP. DTAP uh, basically a combination of diphtheria, tetanus, and also uh, a cellular pertussis. Uh, it administered intramuscularly with three doses, sec two, three, five, second, third, and fifth month, and also booster at 18 months. 
So what happen if a child do not do, uh, do not take detect vaccine? It may cause a uh, respiratory tract and skin infection, and also may cause tetanus and uh, whooping cough, which is very common in children if they do not take that vaccination. And next for HIV, uh, HIV is uh, conjugate vaccine. It injected intramuscularly, okay, and then uh, it given uh, four doses, uh, just like uh, DTAP just now, two, three, five. Uh, first, do first dose at second, and then uh, at third month, and then at fifth month, including booster at 18 months. And uh, next one is polio. The vaccine uh, for polio is called as IPV, inactivated polio virus vaccine, IPV. So just same as DTAP and HIB uh, in terms of uh, administration and also the, 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 the age of child that we need to inject it, that we need to inject it. Uh, uh, IPV is given intramuscularly as well and and uh, at two, three, five, and 18 months. All right, uh, talking about polio, actually uh, Malaysia, Malaysia has been declared as polio free country at, at 2000, I think, uh, I guess at, at 2000. But then after many, many years, then uh, there is some rising cases, uh, I think last year. And also this year also uh, got some cases in Sabah. Uh, so uh, we hope, uh, inshallah, Malaysia will be free uh, from polio again and no cases uh, will be heard after this. And then uh, for MMR, uh, it is combination of measles, mumps and also rubella. Uh, it is administered at uh, 9 and also 12 months. And next uh, is JE, Japanese encephalitis vaccine. Uh, it is uh, basically epidemic in Malaysia, but it is endemic in Sarawak. So that's why uh, we that's why we give we give that vaccine for those in Sarawak at nine and also in twenty uh, first month. And then the last, the last but not least is HPV. HPV is a sexually transmitted disease, and HPV vaccine. Uh, we give it with uh, three doses, three doses within six months at, uh, at girls for age 13 years old. So we can see uh, some uh, our friends in the secondary school, some female, female, uh, female from our secondary school uh, who got that uh, HP vaccine during uh, Form 1. So that's all I think uh, for the contraindication and also uh, side effect for the vaccination. Uh, I invite my friend Asma to explain about it. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I'll present about the contraindications and side effects of um, vaccination uh, of those in the schedule and also the additional vaccination that is available in Malaysia. So contraindication, there are two types of contraindication. Firstly, uh, relative contraindication. Uh, what, what does it mean? Um, in terms of vaccination, uh, caution should be used when two vaccines are used together and it is acceptable to do so if the outweigh uh, if the benefits outweigh the risk. So um, three points. Firstly, um, live vaccine is contraindicated during pregnancy as there is theoretical risk to fetus. However, if there is significant exposure to serious conditions like polio or yellow fever, um, it is not a contraindication um, as the importance of vaccination outweigh the risk to the fetus. Um, secondly, live vaccines may be given together and this can occur in two conditions. So first condition um, simultaneously and secondly uh, non-simultaneously. So what does simultaneously means here? Simultaneously means that uh, both vaccines are being given on the same day. So if uh, the live vaccines are not 
um, are not administered simultaneously, there should be an interval of at least four weeks uh, required between those two vaccines. Uh, and why is that so? Because uh, the interval is intended to reduce or eliminate interference uh, of uh, interference from the first vaccine given to the second vaccine given later. But um, even if the live vaccines are administered simultaneously, it is uh, possible. However, because there is no interval, uh, there is no interval. So the second vaccine uh, given, sec the second vaccine given, the second vaccine should be repeated. So uh, uh, thirdly is tuberculin skin test, which is also known as Mantu test and MMR vaccine. So uh, under two condition, so firstly, if a mental test um, is being given, MMR should be delayed until the skin test has been read. And usually the skin test reaction would uh, normally appear within 48 to 72 hours after the administration. On the second uh, condition is that when MMR is being given first, there should be at least four weeks interval for men to test. So as MMR is a live uh, attenuated vaccine, um, as it is being given first, it can uh, reduce the reactivity of the men to test and this can lead to a false negative result. So I would like to put uh, an emphasis on the statement in the, re uh, in the red box that vaccination should be postponed if the child has acute febrile illness. I mean like uh, uh, it makes sense that when a child has an acute febrile illness, the body is busy fighting an infection. So even if we vaccinate the child, um, the body may not uh, be able to produce necessary antibody um, to fight against the infection that they are being immunized against. However, there is an exception in which if the child has minor infection, but without fever or systemic features, it is not a contraindication. So uh, to emphasize again, um, vaccination should be postponed if the child has acute febrile illness. Um, next, um, the absolute contraindication. What does it mean? Um, uh, vaccines should not be, uh, vaccination should be avoided uh, in these circumstances as it can cause uh, to, uh, it can lead to a life-threatening situation. So firstly, um, any vaccine, any vaccine is contraindicated if there is any severe anaphylactic reactions to previous dose of the vaccine or to a component of the vaccine. Um, so we'll go through the examples one by one. Um, one should ask the parents um, if their children had an allergic reaction to its egg. So if they had so uh, an allergic reaction to egg, um, yellow fever and influenza vaccines are contraindicated because both of these vaccines are produced in embryonated chicken eggs. But it is a different story in MMR vaccine as um, MMR vaccine is produced um, in the chick embryo in the embryo in the chick embryo fibroblast um, even if the child is allergy allergic to it uh, mmr vaccine can still be um, administered but if the child has um, has uh, has an allergy reaction to gelatin such as yogurt ice cream cheesecake or neomycin so in the, uh, in this case mmr vaccine is contraindicated and the same goes to um, IPV, inactivated poliovirus vaccine. Um, if um, there is any anaphylactic reaction to neomycin, polymycin B, and streptomycin, IPV is contraindicated. So secondly, um, killed vaccines are contraindicated in severe uh, if the child has severe local induration or severe generalized reactions in previous dose. So how do we define severe here? Um, severe here means that if it involves more than two-thirds of the limbs, and as you can see in the picture, there is a deep induration appearance of the left thigh, uh, and as an additional information, 
the preferred site for vaccination in children is at the at the anterolateral aspect of the thigh. Um, thirdly, live vaccines are contraindicated in immunosuppressed children. For instance, if they had malignancy such as leukemia, lymphoma, or after any um, transplantation. So the principle here is that live vaccine um, must replicate um, to produce immunity. So in immunosuppressed um, individuals, they may be unable to limit the replication of the live vaccine. So because of that, um, live vaccine is contraindicated. And the same goes for primary immunodeficiency syndrome, um, such as uh, B or T lymphocyte uh, deficiency or neutrophils um, defect. Uh, the example is uh, BCG, in which it is um, contraindicated absolutely uh, to be administered in symptomatic HIV infected children. However, it can be given to newborns of HIV infected mother as um, usually newborn are, newborns are uh, asymptomatic at birth. Uh, next, I'll talk about the special side effects of vaccine um, in the national immunization schedule. So there are eight vaccines. Uh, firstly is BCG. The special side effects, uh, the special side effect is adenitis may occur and like we can see uh, lymph node enlargement at the axillary or supraclavicular area for hepatitis B vaccine. There could be um, soreness at injection site and fever in the first 48 hours. For uh, DTEP, there would be soreness or swelling at the injection site, um, fever, fussiness, feeling tired, loss of appetite and vomiting. And serious reactions can also occur, but it is rare, um, such as seizures, non-stop crying for three hours or more, or high fever, which is more than 40.5 Celsius. So previously, um, the vaccine is DTP, but um, the current one is D, uh, DTAP, which is the ACE, uh, acellular hepatitis, in which it is associated with um, lesser side effects than before. So the fourth vaccine um, is Haemophilus influenza type B vaccine. Um, the, uh, the special side effects are like uh, local reaction, uh, malaise, headache, fever, irritability, inconsolable crying, and seizures, which is very rarely. And next. Um, IPV, uh, the special side effect, uh, the special side effects are local reaction, MMR, there could be uh, sometimes fever or swelling of the gland in the cheek or neck, and also a serious reaction, which is rarely occurred. HPV, um, ge uh, the generalized side effect and also Japanese encephalitis vaccine that can also be local reaction, fever, chill, headache and lassitude. So next, um, I'll talk more about the additional vaccination in Malaysia and also its benefit. So there are 10 additional vaccination that is available in Malaysia. So firstly is um, cholera vaccine. Um, it is beneficial as it is effective for six months in a single dose and only effective against the ELTO strain. So the ELTO strain is the dominant strain of the um, Vibrio cholera. And it is also indicated for travelers that want to, uh, for, for traveling to risk environment such as low sanitary conditions. And this may apply to uh, relief workers uh, in refugee camps. Second vaccines available is um, influenza vaccine, in which it prevents millions of illnesses and flu-related doctor's visits each year. It also reduces the risk of flu-associated hospitalization for children. Um, this vaccine is recommended for children with chronic decompensated respiratory or cardiac disorders, in which um, it can be life-saving for these children. Um, the third vaccine available is rabies. Uh, it acts as prophylaxis for travelers with a significant risk of exposure to rabies. Uh, and rabies infection is usually transmitted uh, through a bite and dog is the main source. 
So, and also if you are traveling to a hyperendemic area where modern rabies vaccines may not be available, it is um, beneficial to get a um, rabies vaccine. The fourth vaccine is meningococcal vaccine. It prevents meningococcal disease caused by Neisseria meningitis and also for travelers visiting sub-Saharan Africa um, during dry season, especially if close contact with locals is anticipated. But uh, bear in mind that there is special precaution for this um, vaccine in which children under two years of age are not protected by the vaccine. So if their parents want to vaccinate uh, their children, they should wait until um, the children are over two years of age. Uh, the fifth vaccine is rotavirus vaccine. It has high efficacy. Um, it provides more than 70% protection against hospitalization for RVGE, rotavirus gastroenteritis. Um, the sixth vaccine is a pneumococcal vaccine. It helps to prevent pneumococcal disease caused by streptococcus pneumonia. Uh, and also the PCV can reduce antibiotic resistance to streptococcus pneumonia. Uh, the six, uh, the seven vaccine available is varicella zoster vaccine. It uh, provides prevention from severe varicella and its complication. It has high percentage of effectiveness and for children, uh, and it is beneficial for children in remission from leukemia for over one year. And this is an exception. Like I've uh, presented before that uh, as varicella zoster is a life attenuated vaccine. It should be contraindicated in immunocompromised children. However, because um, after consideration that the vaccination uh, benefit outweigh the risk, so it is uh, an exception. Uh, the eighth vaccine is hepatitis A vaccine. It provides long-term protection, prevent from liver disease, and it is safe and well tolerated with fewer adverse effects. And last but not least um, is typhoid vaccine. So there are two types of typhoid vaccine. Um, firstly is Typhim VI. It is an um, inactivated uh, vaccine. Uh, it is administered parentally and for children over two years of age. And the duration of uh, protection is for three years. Well, sec uh, the second um, Typhoid vaccine is TY21A. It is a, it is a live um, attenuated vaccine. It is an oral vaccine and should be administered in children over six years. And it provides uh, protection for five to seven years. Uh, so that's all from me. I'll pass to the next presenter. Oh, okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I hope everyone can hear my voice. I am Rupert Chinat Jabuti Ismail, Ismail, and I will continue with the presentation. Okay, so for my part, I will um, continue with the next point, which is controversy. That covers controversy regarding vaccination, ways to handle antibiotics, and issue of vaccine hardness. Next. Okay. So these are the main controversies surrounding vaccination. First is religious reasons. This is mainly pertains to the components of the vaccine itself. As such, some certain vaccines have animal derived genetic or those um, materials that derive from animals like pork, which is against some um, against certain religions such as Islam. Next is personal beliefs or philosophical reasons. Um, people who believe in this. Um, thought that natural immunity is better for their children than acquired through vaccination. And the most popular belief is that they rather not put extra chemicals into children's bodies because they thought it is self-sufficient to just have healthy diet and lifestyle, which is not applicable in today's day and age. And lastly is safety concerns, which certain, in which certain people doubt the short-term adverse effect following immunization as well as the long-lasting negative effects. And the most famous adverse effect that uh, circulates among anti-vaxxers is the relation between vaccine and autism, which has been um, proven in multiple researches done by CDC themselves since 2003 that proves no relation between autism and vaccination. Next. 
Um, so next is how to tackle anti-vaxxers. Anti-vaxxers, um, to, to give a little trivia on anti-vaxxers, they actually exist even in Edward Jenner's era. If you don't know who Edward Jenner is, Edward Jenner is the person who pioneered the concept of vaccine. So anti-vaxxers have existed long in 1795, 171795. Okay. To the main basis on how to tackle anti-vaxxers is that first you must have uh, you must establish good doctor-patient relationship by building the trust, by building trust with your patient. And it um you have always to remember remember that communication is key. So you have to explain with clarity the reasons uh, why we take uh, why we um, go for vaccination and the consequences if the patient decide to not um, vaccinate their children. Okay, so these are the steps that we suggest that you could take if you face anti-vaccines. First is to identify the arguments that the vaccine denial is addressing. It could be stem from conspiracies in which they uh, in which they deny the scientific evidences and thought that the creation of vaccines stems from um, some sort of governmental secret that um, that tries to um, manipulate the public. And next is fake experts, which uh, are people who decide to follow. Uh, those people who claim themselves as experts, but they do not have any credibility in doing so. Uh, next is selectivity or bias. Um, this is, in my opinion, is the most um, difficult type of people that we have to handle because they only look for or listen to things that they want to hear, things that um, are in their favour. Next is impossible expectation in which the patient uh, have um, an expectation of 0% side effects of the vaccine. So once you identify the arguments, you have to correct the context by first explaining the threat of disease. Vaccine preventable disease can be very severe. And this is when you give out examples such as polio and give out the facts that it causes millions of deaths per year around the world. And we should also tell them that prevention is the best intervention. We could also explain that there are no equally safe and effective alternatives to vaccinations and that vaccination is the most effective health intervention for prevention of many serious diseases. And lastly, in terms of safety, any theor theoretical risk to the individual and society is far away by the risk to one and all of not taking it. That means to say that a person who do not uh, who do not take vaccine face far greater risk as compared to person who who do take vaccine moving on okay and last step is to unmask the technique used to counter uh patient who use conspiracy uh, tech, conspiracy technique is to say that the idea they either totally ignores the mass of scientific evidence produced and to explain the scientific evidence to them scientific information to them. Next is fake experts. We have for fake experts to counter them is to tell them that the idea are uh, from those who are not considered as experts in the field of vaccine safety and effectiveness. And those with selectivity technique, um, this is actually quite difficult to counter with. Um, we could say that as long as she does not consider the scientific evidence as a whole, then the discussion won't go nowhere. But personally, to counter people with selectivity or biased um, opinion, we should come to a common ground, which is at the end of the day, we and the patient, we all just want to have to have uh, to have our children uh, safe from diseases. So make a discussion on how to make uh, on rather than giving out bombarding them with more facts that they will deny undoubtedly uh, we should go to give them that 
this vaccine is actually beneficial and it is actually for the benefits of the children and yeah, come to a common ground in that terms. And lastly is impossible expectation. We could counter uh, it by telling them that the fact that is all medication does not has has never been guaranteed hundred percent safe. Give them like examples of common medications such as aspirin. Even those have their own side effects. Okay. Moving on. Uh, next is the issue of halalness of the vaccine. So from this quote, it is said that in Islam, um, it is actually um, advisable to um, to prevent rather than to um, prevent um, it is uh, it is advised in Islam that prevention is better than cure. Next. The rulings of vaccine is permissible when the vaccine is made from halal, clean and pure materials. And when the in for treatment, when the in is for treatment and as a preventative measure. Um, and vaccine could also be prohibited if it is made from prohibited materials. But it could be permissible if that vaccine is for situations that require immediate action. Okay, moving on to the last part of this presentation which is discussion in regards to the problem with dengue vaccine and difficulty in developing COVID-19 vaccines. Okay. Next. So the current status of, status of dengue vaccine development right now is that um, our main goal is actually to produce a safe, effective and affordable dengue vaccines again against prostate. And right now we have Dengovexia Dengue vaccine, a dengue vaccine developed by Sanofi Pasteur, which has been licensed with five dengue vaccine candidates in clinical development and other two candidates now in phase three trials. Next. The problems in dengue vaccine is that first, vaccine development is difficult because protective immunity induced by natural dengue vaccine infection and dengue virus infection is predominantly Serotype specific after a few first few months. However, this will expose the individuals to have increased risk for more severe forms of dengue during second um, dengue virus infection with a heterologous dengue virus serotype. Next is we have lack of reliable immunological markers and absence of faithful animal models in this phenomenon. Therefore, we cannot compare the immunity. Um, in between animals and the human. Next um, is the efficacy of dengue vaccine. Um, right now, the efficacy against serotype 2 virus was at best suboptimal. It is said that the efficacy is significantly lower in children 2 to 5 years of age and subjects who were seronegative for dengue virus at baseline, which means subjects that, that haven't been exposed to dengue virus in their life. And this vaccine has been licensed only for the use of children more than nine years of age, which means that there's missing an important segment of the population at risk. And how, but the vaccine use, there are no adverse safety signals were observed in the vaccine trials among this older age group. However, the follow-up during this trial is short. Hence, rises up the concerns in the durability, in like how long does the virus get, does the vaccine can cover? Right. Uh, we have come to the last part, which is the difficulties in developing COVID-19 vaccine. First, it is a relatively new virus because we have only just discovered COVID-19 um, at the end of last year. Okay. And hence, there are so many things that we still unclear about COVID-19. For example, first is we have unclear biological characteristics of the viruses in terms of the route of dissemination to the lungs is unknown. So if the dissemination to the lungs is after upper respiratory tract infection, then we can use intranasal live attenuated vaccine 
to induce local immunity to protect upper respiratory and lower respiratory tract, um, as well as reduce natural, natural uh, shedding. However, if the root of dissemination is virulina, then we can use PAR M2 vaccine to elicit sufficient virus neutralizing antibody in serum to block virulina, which prevents lung infection as well as virus uh, shedding. And next is uh, COVID-19 infections lead to natural shedding of virus and hence causing further transmission. So the virus uh, developed must prevent natural shading by improving mucosal immunity. And to improve um, mucosal immunity, um, we need, of course, uh, the vaccine itself must need to have, um, um, must, must be able to improve mucosal immunity. However, um, the seed vaccine for mucosal immunity can be short-lived and hence it required multiple boosts. <clears throat> Next is the undesired immunopotentiation um, in the form of eosinophilic infiltration um, after immunization with uh, after uh, challenge infection um, after giving immunization with whole virus vaccine or complex S protein um, vaccine. Uh, that means you see that in, in the trial, they give uh, immunization with vi whole virus vaccine and complex protein vaccine, and then they try to challenge the infection. However, they found out there's undesired immunopotentiation in terms of eosinophilic infiltration. And lastly is we lack of suitable animal model in which there are, there are no animal models that appropriately mimic human COVID-19 infection. Therefore, we do not know how reliable it is to compare between the animal models and human immunity. All right, I think that is all. These are the resources. Um, thank you very much. Um, All right. So, um, have any uh, question? Hello. Hello. Oh, hang on. Any question? Eh? Any question uh, related to the presentation? Have we ever seen the virus in humans? Have we ever received anti vaxxers at our hospital? Like, have any student ever faced them? Anyone? Any, any, anybody has encountered with uh, when you attend this with your. Uh, Lecturer or even with your uh, husband, anyone has experience? I have experience. Assalamualaikum. Um, I think I've, I've experienced once, but this is um, I experienced it with one of the car student who claimed that I, I I don't know what what is in their brain, but they said that this kind of vaccine is sort of conspiracy, and then. then he presented uh, he present, present me with facts and figures claiming that it is true from this kind this kind of uh, website but actually it is not coming from 
the right source. In, in, in fact, it is created by a group of people in the West who claim that vaccine is dangerous, vaccine can cause harm to your baby instead of benefit. But it is clear that vaccine bring more benefit than danger to uh, to, to to the infant. So it is kind that and more unfortunate that student is a biomedical student right. of right. health science. So it is quite disappointed to, to hear something like that from him. Anyone else? Anyone else? Want to share the uh, uh, experience? Eh? Um, and one more thing, I want what uh, I, I forgot to, to highlight something that he said that this kind of muftis, this 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 azhar council or whatnot, or religious bodies that gave out fatwa is being controlled by the Freemason, by the conspiracy, by the atheists and whatnot. I, I, it's getting very very crazy by from this people. <laughs> All right. Okay. So actually, uh, what have your uh, friend highlighted eh, just now? Uh, again, I mean, it, it, this is uh, when you uh, go to final year, then you will see more when you go to, to, to work and hospital, you go to clinic. Actually, it's, uh, they, they are minority, okay, but they are very loud, lah. okay? I think some, I'm sure that even in our life, we have some loud people around us, lah. all right? So, they are minority, but uh, they are very loud, and then... Uh, of course, in reality, we will try to um, what do you call this? Uh, explain to them. But I think some of this uh, group of uh, anti-vaxxer or vaxxer refusal uh, is almost impossible to to uh, what do you call this? Make them uh, switch their belief, right? So what we can do is our aim is actually to uh, convert or explain to those who are really uh, uncertain or asking questions for verification. But those who are already, I mean the studies have shown, uh, I mean those who are already under the, uh, there are three groups that your friend said just now, right? Those who are religious belief and also um, what you call this a philosoph philosophical belief. These are a group that uh, almost impossible for you to, to, to convince and convert them. So I think we should uh, reserve our energy to uh, explain the situation to those parents who are confused and really asking for verification. I mean, uh, I mean, as time goes, you will then uh, come across and understand uh, which group that will fall under this. Lah. Okay. So I think at your level, I hope that because there are also uh, uh, doctors or even uh, doctors who, who uh, somehow turn to uh, support the group who refuse vaccine, so very unfortunate. Lah. So just like you said just now, right, from medical sciences, I mean, they, should, they, they shouldn't. But the problem is with this group with uh, doctors of basic medical sciences, when you have the title, and I uh, know you misuse it and uh, people, you have uh, people to follow you, okay? So, uh, but any question in relation to the uh, immunization? Uh, I think uh, the, the, the specific uh, diseases are covered, uh, will be covered under infectious diseases, uh, all right? So, uh, that's why I, we, we, don't, we didn't uh, explain in, in detail. Any uh, question in relation to the presentation? Hello, saya go. Ya. Ah nak tanya. Kalau kalau ikut jadual apa tu contohnya uh, dalam jadual nak bagi vaksin contohnya ah uh, MMR MMR kena bagi masa bayi tu ah uh, what we call masa Bahasa contoh, bahasa sembilan, sembilan bulan apa, kalau Macam tak bagi bahasa sembilan bulan tu, dia dia apa yang ni 
dia tak ambil masa 9 bulan tu. Okay. Uh, we, we we can we call it reschedule. Alright. There's some particular reason we why uh, this uh, schedule is made because why uh, schedule is made say MMR previously MMR uh, three years ago was only given at uh, 12 months. But past three years we have increased it to two doses, nine months and 12 months. Main reason is because the incidence of measles is increasing. Right, and then uh, younger children are, are getting it. So then uh, the government schedule it for two doses. Same as the why the tap hip and polio you need to three and fifth month because these are among the time when the diseases are more severe. Right, so that's why we give it. Uh, we give it uh, uh, earlier. But there's some instances. All right. Uh, whatever reason, uh, psychosocial, financial reason, parents may have missed the schedule right so our duty is not to what you call this um crucify them or blame them why they they didn't they didn't bring their, their children at the schedule time uh, you ask them some of them let's say during pkp right no income they can't go to clinic the sehata, no transport this is real so they come late they come at nine months then they haven't they have missed a lot of vaccination so we reschedule it okay in the Malaysian protocol you can look at the uh, how we reschedule the vaccination let's say they only receive one hepatitis B on one month and then come back to you at seven years finally right or receive only two doses and then after age of one year came back so there are ways that you can reschedule it with the rationale so you can refer to the Malaysia pediatric protocol if you are in the section of immunization and there is a section how we reschedule this vaccine. Okay, it's also, uh, of course, uh, in terms of efficacy, uh, when we follow the reschedule uh, program, then you will get the protection once you complete it. But before that, of course, they are at risk. Okay? Okay, All right, any other question? You, you can't see my, is it, I, no video, is it? Uh, no my, video, my, doctor. Um, no video, eh? Nah, tak apalah dengan suara juga. I don't know what happened. Right. So, I need a last question. If no, then we can end this uh, uh, session. I think okay. none at the moment. Okay, all right. Tak ada, Okay, all right. So we are with uh, Tasmi Kifara and Sarawal Ahmad. All right, uh, the group wrap. Nanti, uh, please email me your your slide. Nah, I'll pass the my email uh, in the WhatsApp. Uh, email me the slide. Eh? Okay. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, Sarawal Ahmad. Thank you, Doctor. 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 Thank you, Doctor.